White Wolf here at Ways of the Wild Institute in the Green Mountains of Vermont. Now if uh, you look directly above my head, you will see somebody's house that uh, lives around here. This is uh, the house of the bald face hornet. And we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, bald face hornet today. Um, they're uh, a quite um, prevalent creature all across uh, North America, and they're limited to uh, North America. They don't live anywhere else in the world. Uh, you'll find them uh, through Canada, uh, all the way down through, uh, uh, boy, California, all the way through the East Coast, uh, down through the, uh, the deep south, uh, down into the desert to the southwest. Um, so they have a, a really uh, huge range. And um, as a matter of fact, they're not actually a hornet. But let's take a closer look at the nest and the hornets and uh, talk a little bit about them. Typical bald-faced hornet nest uh, that is in a beech tree, an American beech tree. Uh, it's actually right outside my house. Now, as I said, the bald-faced hornet is not actually a hornet. Right? It's not related to the hornets of uh, Europe. These, um, these are actually more associated to wasps. And they're well known for their uh, extremely aggressive behavior and also their sheer size. Okay, They're uh, a very, very large wasp. They're the largest wasp in the wasp's family found in uh, North America. Now uh, let's talk about the uh, the nest here for a minute. The nest is uh, pretty amazing. Okay, These nests are usually begun here in the North Country uh, in the month of May. However, uh, once you gain elevation in the North Country, like uh, in the mountain regions, you'll find that these hornet uh, nests sometimes don't start until June. Uh, like this one. This one didn't start until June. But it's the beginning of August. You can see how big that nest has already gotten. Um, by the end of uh, the building year, this nest could reach the size of a basketball. Um, interestingly enough, it's the queen who hibernates all winter and then comes out of hibernation in the spring who begins the nest. She begins the nest by herself. And what she does is she flies from tree branch to tree branch and with her mandibles she scrapes away tree bark fiber. Then she carries that uh, the fibers from the tree bark back to the nest site. And what she does is mixes it with her uh, saliva and turns it into um, kind of a, a, a paste, like a paper mache type of paste. And then she begins to weave uh, long papery strips together. And uh, she begins to build the nest alone. And she'll build a little upside down cup and she'll attach it to the uh, bottom of a branch or uh, you know, a building, overhang of some kind where it's protected. And then in the center of that uh, upside down cup, she'll begin uh, building the honeycomb out of the same paper material. And because she was impregnated last uh, fall, she begins to, uh, to lay her eggs in those honeycomb. And then, when her daughters are born and grow old enough, they begin to help her build the nest. All right, there's only the, um, you have the workers, you have the, um, the drones, and you have the queen. And the queens, they're the fertile females who uh, lay the eggs and begin the nests. Usually they're the only ones that survive hibernation over the uh, winter months. Um, and then you have the workers. The workers are all the um, infertile um, females. And they are the ones who do all the work building the uh, rest of the nest and uh, also defend the nest. They're the ones that uh, will sting. Had to uh, move my position. There was a hornet uh, kindly telling me that I was a bit too close for comfort with all this yakking I'm doing. So I'll move over here. Anyway, uh, then you have the drones. The drones are the males. Okay, They're the fertile males that will eventually uh, mate with the uh, females. Uh, but the, the drones, they don't sting. They don't have any stingers. All right? um, it's just the, uh, 
the queens and also her female offspring that have the stingers. And so you'll see them going in and out here. The ones going in and out of the nest are the ones that are building the honeycomb structure on the inside. And you'll see the one over to the right, that one's adding layers of uh, paper to the outside of the nest, making it larger. And you can tell uh, that this nest is mainly made from the uh, bark of uh, beech, maple, uh, and cherry. And you can tell by the coloring. A lot of times you can tell which parts of the nest were made from which, tr uh, which trees by looking at the coloration. Now the nest is uh, pretty amazing because only the outside layers get wet in uh, the most serious downpours. The inside never gets wet, it stays bone dry. And also the, um, the nest is an amazing insulator. Even when the, uh, the temperature drops down to 35 degrees um, here in the mountains um, in fall at night, the, uh, the hornets, or the, in this case the wasps, they'll uh, shiver all right, by vibrating their wing muscles, uh, the muscles that move their wings that is, and uh, they'll do that inside the, the core of the nest and keep that nest between 80 and 85 degrees when it's 35 degrees outside. That's pretty impressive. That's how they keep their, uh, their larva uh, alive inside there for so long. Now, hornets, uh, most of their food are, uh, consists of uh, live uh, creatures, uh, mainly insects. And uh, they won't eat things dead like that. They, uh, they prefer their food live. They will, uh, they will sweep down and take it with their mandibles. Um, they will sting it if they have to. Um, but they're also uh, very prone to uh, nectar and berries. Uh, they do like that sweet taste in life also. Notice how the inside of their uh, hole there is layered? Each layer is an air pocket which traps warm air. Enhances the insulation of the nest. Now just because you find a hornet's nest does not mean that you have to destroy it. The only time that they unfortunately have to be removed as if they happen to be in a high traffic area. Especially with our lot of people, kids, and pets moving around. Because hornets will defend their nest, their territory, with serious aggression if they have to. But if it's not bothering anyone, leave them alone. But in this tree you can see how camouflaged they make the nest. Tucked right in there. They'll also do this in field grasses. Tall, unmowed fields. They'll weave that nest right inside the grasses. So it's very important when you're walking through areas where there are wasps around to pay attention to the bee activity, the wasp activity in the area. So there's a little bit about the bald-faced hornet, or the bald-faced wasp. Again, the nest is right above my head. As long as I keep my energy low, and I don't pose a threat to them, they're not going to bother me, I'm not going to bother them. So, this is White Wolf, your Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont. If you wish to learn anything else about the wilderness, native living ways, wilderness survival, medicine ways, come check us out. We've got our website, awaysofthewildinstitute.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook uh, under the same name. Be well and happy. Lula Mollison.